Okay, that was a little terrifying. <gasps> oh my god, I just ruined it. We're doing the pink cowgirl theme. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Kit and Kitten. I'm Catherine. It is a week before my 23rd birthday, and I have yet to celebrate my 22nd. How? Why? Procrastination. Also, my original plans fell through and it was too upsetting to revisit. Lo and behold, in the last leg of the race, I decided I wasn't quite through with 22 yet. I spent the time I had during the week to prepare and the night before my 23rd, I celebrated my 22nd birthday. Disclaimer, a majority of this video was filmed last year in January of 2022. So when I refer to the ongoing plague, I say it's been two years, but as of editing, it's been three. I have never had a themed friend birthday party, mainly due to time management and organizational skills. I saw this video by Fernanda Ramirez where she's celebrating her 19th birthday and she's got this pink cowgirl theme which has been trending for a while now and I absolutely love it. I think it's adorable. I admire how much she did to celebrate. You know, she had fun. You know, what, a week, maybe even a month's worth of, you know, birthday celebrations? Like, yes, please, absolutely. So this whole video is inspired by hers, and it's just an opportunity for me to do something meaningful for myself. I love the idea of celebrating birthdays and going all out. I love the idea of getting dressed up, decorations, you know, parties, music, the whole atmosphere because it makes life so much less mundane. In the past, I've had this idea where if it doesn't happen in the window of opportunity of your birthday, then oh, it can't happen. You know, you can't celebrate your birthday outside of that. And I realize how silly of a mindset that is. Instead of wishing that somebody would plan some cool outing for me for my birthday, yeah, no. We want to do that for ourselves. We don't need somebody else to plan it. Yeah, sure, it adds some sentiment that's like, oh wow, I can't believe my friend did this for me, but it's also like, why don't I just do this for myself? So, going back to you know, the time management and the organizational skills, it's made simple things a lot harder to accomplish. So, it ends up being easier to live vicariously through someone else than it is to throw a party and celebrate, which it, it can be, it sucks and it's sad. You know, I'm tired of my plans not working out, of, you know, the buildup of trying to put something together and then, you know, people can't make it and then it's like, wow, that's a letdown. And I decided I'm, I'm going to celebrate. If I do something for myself, for myself, by myself, I only have me to worry about not showing up. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm thinking 40 foot yacht, crowded with people, disco balls, the works. Just kidding. It's just gonna be me at home because, you know, there's a plague. But that doesn't mean we can't get creative with it. Ah, so our itinerary. We have decorate, change it into our outfit, assemble the cake, and start the party. Previously, my mom picked up pink plates, napkins, cups, utensils, the works. And I thought we had a pink tablecloth, but I don't know what happened to it, so we're gonna have to live without. I ordered pink door foil. Well, it's happy birthday banners. I'll see you on the yacht. There she is. Look at her. 
Warning. Warning. Existential dread ahead. Warning. Warning. Existential dread ahead. I find it really cool that you can have two contradictory trains of thought in your head at the same time. You know, on one hand, you know, I know how fortunate I am to not have lost someone in the pandemic, to not be worrying about, oh, how am I going to pay rent this month? You know, and with that comes the sense of, hey, it's been two years. I feel like I'm losing my youth to this in a sense that my prime years are wasting away both due to the pandemic and my own personal issues. I built up this idea about wanting 22 to be a good year because of have, having so many years build up from when Taylor Swift released 22 to when I turned 22. And I came to the end of it crawling out of rock bottom from personal issues. It was more upsetting going from 22 to 23 versus 21 to 22. I genuinely was not happy about turning 23. Because I felt like, you know, this was supposed to be a good year and it wasn't. And it, it's a silly mindset to build something up like that where you basically overhyped it. And when I say losing my youth, I mean, you know, in a sense that, you know, life for me is at a standstill. And, you know, while the world's kind of starting to reopen, it's like, I'm still uncomfortable taking that risk. I don't want to get sick. I don't want to get my family sick. The risk is still there, but it feels like the world saying we're just gonna live with it And if you're not comfortable with that, then oh well I'm very conscious of the fact that life is short time is fleeting you could die Yesterday or eight years from now. It goes by like that. It's just like being conscious of my morality <laughs> quarter-life crisis as they say and it's a similar mindset to when people hit 50 and they're like, oh wow, oh yikes. I'm noticing the passage of time in a way that time's going pretty fast because I'm spending it a certain way. 2020 to 2022 went by very quickly for me. To go from just turning 21 to all of a sudden now I'm 23, it feels almost like something that I like, want to grieve. I felt like I spent those years poorly in a sense. I am aware and acknowledge that choosing to forego events and activities due to the plague contributes to feeling like my life is passing me by. And trust me, I understand how privileged I am that this is what I'm worried about, you know, not the rent, not the my loved ones dying, not me dying. Just the usual existential crisis that comes with birthdays. Tangled. Holographic pink is so cute. <gasps> oh my god, I just ruined it. For the outfit, we have this pink sheer button-up. Button-up? Button-up? I don't know what it is. It's got buttons on it, that's all I know. This uber wrinkly thermal 
shirt. The co-star of this outfit. The pink cowgirl hat with a rhinestone tiara and pink converse. Maybe pink sunglasses for pictures, photo op. None of the pinks match. And most importantly, the other star of the outfit, the cow print pants. But not ordinary cow print pants, strawberry cow print pants. The hat and pants are co-stars. We're doing the pink cowgirl theme. Also, this hat is a child's hat and it doesn't fit my head. The only, way, the only way it fits is if I pull it back out like that. That's cute though. I made a hot milk sponge cake from the Better Homes new cookbook. Now here's something interesting. My maternal grandma owns three copies and my parents own one. One was from my great grandma. One my mom bought at an antique shop maybe 25 years ago. There are two copyright 1953-1962 revised edition third printing books. The recipe includes vanilla and salt. A third copy, missing the pages of the dates estimated between the 70s and 80s, excludes vanilla and salt. The version at my house is copyright 1989, 10th edition, printing dates 1994, 95, and 96, which also excludes the vanilla and salt. We have a photocopy of the older version and we always refer to it. This cake is gluten-free, but I typically make and prefer it with regular all-purpose flour. My maternal grandma, irrelevant, but I like distinguishing who instead of grandma being of one collective unidentified hive mind unit. She made this cake all the time when she used to do square dancing, but she would cut the sugar by about 25%. More recently, my extended family also cut back the sugar. I guess I've become accustomed to it because if I'm having it with icing, I cut back, but without any <coughs> topping or with a whipped cream that's less sweet, wow. It is delicious as is. The icing is buttercream dyed pink. I don't think icing was thawed enough to easily spread the cake and icing were leftovers that I froze so I wouldn't have to make another one this week. There was a mist. Some sparkling cider bottles are screw up that I did. Some are can of vinegar. You'll see me struggling to open it. I went downstairs to get a can of vinegar. When I opened the bottle, it exploded from the jocelyn. You can see the liquid is just gone from the top half of the bottle. Also, as you can see, it secured it with saran wrap and broccoli rubber bands because they stopped including the caps to keep it fizzy. And I didn't realize so I could save the old ones. I want to make a toast. Cheers to turning 22. And cheers to being 22. And Taylor Swift re-released her song, 22. The little ones on the far side. That was exactly the opposite of what I was supposed to do. I'm gonna whack them with the cake. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm gonna pick up the wax. Okay, that was a little terrifying. somewhere else. I don't know where else to put it. Ooh, let's set myself on fire. Now you do that awkward thing while you're waiting for them to sing. You just kind of go like, <laughs> or you can sing with them if you want to do that. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Catherine. Happy birthday to you.
Perfect. Now it's time to cut the cake. I can throw it here on the cake already. I got my sharp one. I would cut. I'm just gonna pop it down so it fall. Now to eat cake. Exciting. That looks sponge cake. It's pink buttercream icing. Good. Happy birthday, Catherine. Happy 22. I got my poison. I'm just like Taylor's version, of course. Thank you. 